Now it is back to school week in many countries across the world, including the U.S., and that's also brought back the pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel, and in some cases anti-Semitic campus protests. Now yesterday the demonstrators were out blocking access to New York's Columbia University. Two protesters arrested at that demo. This after the Ivy League school released a report just last week detailing an atmosphere of incitement and harassment against Jewish students on campus. Now, groups such as the Students for Justice in Palestine, which is officially banned at several schools, pledge to keep up and intensify even their activities in the coming school year. Joining us now in studio is Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Jonathan, uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, usually back to school week is a week uh, one looks forward to, yeah. uh, the start of the new school year. Unfortunately, uh, at the universities this week, it brings the question of uh, how bad are those protests going to be and what can, what should be done to counter it, including on behalf, of course, of the ADL, which is very active in this issue. Yeah, look, the ADL is the oldest anti-hate organization in America, and we are focused fully on trying to put a stop to the madness on these campuses. I'll be really honest, Caleb, we haven't seen anything like it before. It feels as if they have ramped up dramatically since where we were just last, last spring at the end of campuses. And we know that part of the reason is because they've been planning all summer. They had summer intifada camps. They had sessions where they were training about how they would respond. And it's played out in horrific ways. So think about this. While we are still grieving the six hostages whose bodies were recovered on Saturday night, the response of the anti-Israel crowd are these rallies where they literally imitate putting blood on these statues. They wear the paraphernalia and the wave the flags of Hamas and PFLP and Hezbollah. These are outright support for terror groups. And let's be crystal clear for your audience. This is not pro-ceasefire. This is not pro-peace. This is anti-Israel and it's anti-Semitic. And I'll just make one last point. You can't claim that these are nonviolent protests when they use language that incites violence. You can't claim that you're the side of peace when you use rhetoric that calls for war. I mean, literally, it's stunning, and that's why we need to act to stop it. Now, we see some universities taking action. NYU, my alma mater, by the way, oh. New York University, uh, just now passing a new student code of behavior, yeah. which forbids discrimination, not against Jews, but specifically against Zionists, people yeah. that de define themselves as Zionists. Uh, we see in California, the state universities yeah. there, uh, passing new regulations against masking yeah. uh, students. But what do you think? What would you like to see? What would the ADL like to see done by administrators, and maybe even if we have to talk about the uh, governmental federal level in the U.S. I'll tell you what we want to see happen, Caleb. So number one, let's give credit to President Mills from NYU. She was the first to introduce a code of conduct that recognized that Zionism, Zionist is a euphemism for Jews. It simply is. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. These people don't discriminate when they are, again, casting aspersions or vandalizing or harassing or actually committing acts of violence against Jewish people. We're, they don't say, do you support Bibi Netanyahu? Would you vote for Likud? We are all Zionists in their eyes. So let me tell you what needs to happen. Number one, we want to see, simply put, the authorities enforce their codes of conduct and law enforcement enforce the law. Providing material support to a terror organization in the United States is a violation of the criminal code. The people who do so should be arrested. And these campus college presidents, they need to simply make sure that their Jewish students are safe, as they would for any other group of people. Hopefully, NYU will enforce their rules. That's number one. Number two, we want to see the law, the Title VI laws enforced. So you can't discriminate against people in the United States if you get federal funds based on your religion or your ethnicity. So these efforts to discriminate against Jews or Israelis are violating Title VI. We're pushing the federal government to act more strongly. And we've created a website to make to allow students to file those claims. We had nearly 700 claims in the last academic year, and we've already relaunched the website. Many more are coming. And we will, again, use the power of the government to stop these people. And then thirdly, we want these campuses to act in a positive way. That's why ADL launched a report card last year grading the schools and how they're handling anti-Semitism. And Columbia, which I think is on the screen, got an F. Harvard got an F. Many of these schools need to do better. So we're going to encourage them, hey, if you improve the conditions, if you adopt better policies, you will get a better grade. And that's good for everyone.
All right. Uh, now, uh, I want to move on. There's uh, October 7th, of yeah. course, is coming, uh, which is going to be a very somber anniversary. Uh, we just saw the, uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, just uh, now uh, file a criminal complaint That's against right. uh, six leaders of Hamas. Three of them are presumed to be, have been killed already, or, or one, a couple of them certainly have been killed. Uh, uh, now, the ADL also did file in the legal system yeah. a, a suit, a complainant, that states that plaintiffs, victims of uh, October 7th, should receive comp compensation. We're not talking about Hamas now, but from nation states, Iran, Syria, and uh, North Korea, interestingly. So talk to us about that. What is ADL, what does it expect from that suit, realistically, and what was the point of, of targeting beyond, uh, even beyond Iran in this case, uh, some of these countries? Look, we are seeing Holocaust denialism of the 21st century, because people are saying that 10-7 didn't happen, or that the crimes were invented, or again, that Hamas had no role and its patrons had no role. We know it's wrong. So we filed in federal court in June a case against state sponsors of terror. In U.S. law, we have the ability to make claims against countries that are officially state sponsors of terror. That includes the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Arab Republic of Syria, and North Korea, the People's Republic of North Korea. Now, why did we do that? Because we have evidence that Iran and Syria, North Korea, helped provide training, helped provide resources, gave technical assistance to Hamas that created the conditions in which 10-7 could happen. And we will hold them responsible. Now, the U.S. government has frozen funds of the Islamic Republic of Iran and these other governments. We have access to these dollars. So we are suing on behalf of 130 victims of 10-7, either they were killed and were representing their families, they were wounded or they were taken hostage. We're suing the government of Iran for $4 billion. And let me be clear, when we win, Caleb, and we will win, we will prove definitively in a court of law what everyone knows, that Iran is the largest single state sponsor of terror in the world. They have Jewish blood on their hands, and we will make them pay. All right. Uh, well, certainly that's a, a legal process that hopes yeah. it uh, certainly is going to take. Uh, it will be a long, a long road. It but will. It's a, it, it is a worthy road. Now, the ADL is active on many fronts when it mm -hmm. comes to anti-Semitism uh, uh, in Holocaust denial. One of those, of course, is social media, which we have to address. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about uh, just an incident just really in the last uh, uh, day. Mm -hmm. uh, Tucker Carlson, the former Fox News host, who's now uh, working independently, uh, interviewed a, 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 I use the word historian in air quotes. Uh, he is a, basically a Holocaust denial yeah. uh, Daryl Cooper. Uh, uh, he uh, then put it on uh, X. Twitter, yeah. uh, where he has uh, millions, tens of millions of followers. Uh, uh, I, uh, among the claims that he made was that uh, the real villain of World War II was not Adolf Hitler, it was Winston Churchill. Yeah. And he said that Germany, quote, was a war where they, where they were, com Germany was completely unprepared to deal with the millions and millions of prisoners of war, of local political prisoners. They went in with no plan for that. Just threw these people in the camps, and millions of people ended up dead. It just kind of happened by accident uh, by Germany. Now, uh, ADL did respond to that. I, if we if we have the uh, tweet, if we could uh, put up the tweet. Uh, a Tucker Carlson's praise of Nazi apologist Daryl Cooper is an insult to the memory of six million Jews who were murdered by Hitler's Nazi regime. We should say Elon Musk uh, did retweet initially retweet that tweet called that interview very worthwhile and very interesting. Uh, there was an outcry. He did uh, take down that tweet, but of course it was up there. Now, you've had interactions personally sure. with Elon Musk, and you've had, uh, ADL has had issues with uh, X. I would like you to respond to that and expand a bit on, for example, the reaction that we saw there by Look, the ADL. Tucker Carlson is an extremely problematic individual who's been peddling anti-Semitism along with other forms of racism and bigotry for many years. So it's not surprising that he platformed this Holocaust denier, this individual who would make such an egregious, outrageous claim. I mean, I can tell you, although the Nazi party, the Third Reich, might not have had plans for everything, the one thing they did have was a plan for the Jews. It was called the final solution. The goal was to annihilate the Jews of Europe and eventually around the world. That plan they had. 
And so to put that kind of language out there and to suggest that this is valid is a desecration of the memory of the six million. I'm the grandson of a Holocaust survivor from Germany myself, so I take this personally. And it's absolutely offensive. So we called it out, and we will continue to do so. And look, it is very hard to intuit what Elon is thinking. We've dealt with him. I've dealt with him personally quite a bit over the years. I'm glad he took down the tweet, but it's wrong, I believe, to platform not just people like Daryl Cooper saying such disgusting, vile anti-Semitism, but amplifying people like Tucker Carlson. I strongly disagree with it. I've called him out when he was on Fox. I'll call him out now again. I just, he's not only not an honest broker, he engages in the kind of bigotry that doesn't help anyone. How do you respond then briefly to the issue of saying this is free speech, which has become uh, an issue and a very political issue now uh, in the U.S., especially even in the current presidential Look, race? I deeply believe in free speech, Caleb. I think we all do in America. But freedom of speech is not the freedom to slander. Freedom of expression is not the freedom to incite violence. And you make decisions right here on I-24 about who you platform. You decided to interview me, and you might decide not to interview somebody else. You're not abrogating their free speech. So Elon Musk, X, and all the social media services make decisions about who they choose to platform and who they don't, about what messages they amplify and which they don't. So I just don't buy that this is free speech. Let Daryl Cooper say what he wants to say somewhere else where no one needs to hear it. All right. Well, we will not be interviewing Daryl Cooper, I assure you. But Good call. Elon Musk uh, is invited to come on and respond if he was. I hope he if, will. If he would to your, I hope your he comments. Will. Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO of ADL, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having on me. On I-24 News.